Welcome into the fourth mother box. August the 4th, 2023. You are following us at fourth mother box on Instagram, youtube.com slash fourth mother box, where you're seeing our ugly fucking mugs. Thank you for joining us into the madness. The world is crumbling. It's been a crazy week. Today's a six-year anniversary of a Metallica show Kyle and I were at. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But welcome to the fourth mother box. Joining me as always, he missed out on the Gerber baby yet again for 2023, Kyle Cosentino. Kyle, how the hell are you today? Oh, that's, uh, there, there wasn't enough time to recycle that joke. I mean, you had to let more time pass to be able to recycle that joke. But I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. That's all right. I mean, I was very excited to get to my next line. Um, our very special guest joining us today, he he's the only man that still uses brute cologne. The turtle himself, Mike Nora. Mike, how the hell are you today? Oh, I am fantastic. I am honored to be on Fourth Mother Box again. You should. Kyle, would you just come up with a comeback instead of the same recycled uh, rebuttal? Oh, that was bad. That, that was so bad. You're so terrible. Come on, Kyle. Come on. You, you should I, know better. My my comebacks are quite cheeky and full of wit. So I, I quite enjoy them. They're cheeky and I full, do like of, your beard. Like, full of shit. I like your beard, sir. Thank you. It is a solid a, beard. Good, it is a solid it's beard. A, yeah, it's a good beard. I'm jealous. <laughs> Well, you're still 12 years old, so uh, you'll, well, you'll grow into one, or one will grow into you. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's hope so. Um, so before we kind of you know you know get into what's going on in Mike's world, and and I used to be a huge wrestling nerd, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. And SummerSlam is tomorrow night, and I'm I'm pretty excited about that. I want to talk to Mike about that. And actually, Kyle used to be into wrestling too, so I want to talk old SummerSlam memories with him. I I have a couple from the early 2000s that I adore that I wanted to talk to Mike about, see if he, he recalls those that, that I do. But, you know, Mike was, Mike came onto the podcast tonight, you know, before we started recording, a little a little behind the podcast for y'all. He was heated. He sat right down. He was fumigating. You could just see the sweat and the blood and the tears were all coming out. Man, he's he was ready to drop a shell shock on somebody. Uh, Mike? Do you want to do you want to kind of take over and, and and share what the hell's going on here because we we're all about that drama here on the fourth mother box. <laughs> so okay, and this will be short because it's not nothing's going to come of it. Um, so my significant that's other, a threat right at the start. <laughs> uh, we like to call her uh, Betty Cena on GFW podcast, so we'll call her Betty Cena just to keep innocent people out. Um, she t- posted on Facebook. Uh, a little while ago about something that's going on at work. Now, an ex of hers, why she's still friends with him on Facebook, I'll never know. But who am I to tell you? You know, I, I don't tell people what to do. Whatever. So her ex decides to post on it. Now, mind you, this is something about work. Now, her, it hit her. Well, we'll call him her anyway. He might be. Who knows? Um, <laughs> So the first message was, hello, girl, I'll see you text. Okay, first of all, does that even make sense? No. I feel stupider for hearing it. Me too. I I should provide a little bit more information. This guy, it was a former (laughs) cokehead. Shocker. Real shocker, yeah. A cokehead in Chicago. He, He actually had a stroke about eight months ago or so because he did it too much. So that's one of the reasons why he's a little fucked up in the head. Now, I should be nice about this. I mean, he's kind of he's discombobulated now, but I don't care at this point. Because he, he when she was with him, um, he did hit her once. So Ooh. That, that Ooh. right there. Oh, Real man. classy. Real classy. Yeah, right? Yeah. So we do not he, tolerate he that. He goes, and then he goes. If you don't want to marry, if he don't want to marry you, I will. We go to Vegas and get married tomorrow. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. What? Oh. Um, really? Yeah, that's. Uh... I, I'm just hung up on the grammar part of it. Like, 
<laughs> I mean, geez. exactly. I mean, yeah, he's he's pretty much brain dead in a way. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, I, my thing is, I never met the guy, so whatever. And That's then right. I and all I did was comment was good luck with that. Pretty harmful or harmless. Well, um, and then he <laughs> and then he goes, "What? What second alarm? What? What second what? alarm? I, I, was, what second alarm? Should somebody call the authorities over there or something?" <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, what's taking so long? If you're a lover, you'd marry. And then I just left it alone. I mean, she did comment. It's pretty bold. Threat, we don't yeah. need a, we don't need government license to be married. In See, now, we are now married. we're talking. Whatever. Now we're talking. No government involved. That's what I'm talking about. I feel bad in a way for talking about it because he did have a stroke a long time ago. It was like late last year or something. Yeah, he was in the hospital, whatever. But it's still like uh, you're still the same person to acting like a fool. Mm-hmm. And he's she's told him many a times to leave her alone, and he still hasn't. And uh, I really want to do something like, uh, you know, show up to his I, place. Like I should <laughs> show up to his house and do something, but I can't. Yes, because that's just like that's like hurting. A dead patient. Be know, the bigger but... turtle and step away. The children are watching. Right. The children are our future. The children are our turtles. And that's T U R D L E. Turd. Turtle. That one's Kyle. Yeah, you could always send him a glitter bomb. That uh <laughs> that always gets the message across. I know somebody you could consult who's done it before. So <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Not naming any names, of course. Whatever. <laughs> oh man! If he had a car, I go put a cake in his uh, windshield. <laughs> That's, yeah, that only makes sense at this point, <laughs> right? Uh, for those of you that are unaware of that story, our good friend Kurt Knightsky put a slice of cake on Mike's old Geo and just said, "I thought he'd eat it off." That that story was on an old episode of Fourth Box, so you should go check that out. Yeah, well, no, they're a lot better now. Those were the ones back in the day sucked, but <laughs> <laughs> the terrible waste of a chocolate cake, but also funny. Yeah, very. I, I mean, I could have had that piece at the expense of a joke. So, Mike, um, you you mentioned JFW podcast, and of course, I want to tell you one of our pal podcasts, Just Freaking Wrestling, right? That's what that stands for, the JFW podcast, yeah. where you're a co-host with Travis T and th- their version of Kyle. Travis, I'm so sorry that you have to deal with the Kyle as well. Uh, Pac Pac Man, <laughs> right? Pac Man, yeah. yeah. uh, he, he was P P X at first, but PX, we uh, changed he's probably it. Probably awesome. Pac-Man. If he's anything like me, he's probably awesome. No, um, I'm I'm a listener to the show. I talk to Mike about it quite often, and he sounds like a Mark. So it's exactly sounds sounds like a Mark I saw at my first LWF show all the way back in the day. That's what he sounds well, like. So <laughs> better better to be a Mark than a ginger. No, no, this ginger can get on rides without having to be measured. So um, no. unlike you, stealth ginger, secret. Yeah. Ginger man, remember that one? Oh, I I forgot <laughs> to comment on that. I'm like, you actually like dubbed yourself singing over that song, really? Yes, here it is. <laughs> you even it's like just no wait no that's your quote from here it is. Ginger man. This was Tim's you idea. <laughs> you and your little cute soundboard. Yes, I played it all through Mike's all right. rant. It's, it was actually pretty good. <laughs> Oh nice! I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> you're dumb. You're not going to throw shots back at Tim for doing that, Kyle. That was that was all his idea. I mean, why would I throw shots at Tim? I mean, it, when he looks in the mirror every day, he has to see his face, and that's that's a shot enough. So, it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually not bad, Kyle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tim. Well, let me just say, Tim is a guy that you like. He's got nothing. Like he doesn't do anything. Like you can make fun of him for. Like the kid is is like prim and proper. He is. He's got like, you know, more clothes than you know most chicks. You know what I mean? Like that's about it. Like he's just well, there. He doesn't there's do your anything. Ring. He's yeah. got these. He's like he's, he's a White Sox know. fan. I mean, you can rip on him. him for that. Tom. Now, now, Tom. Tom is just a a gold mine of things to make fun of. 
So, um, I mean, even just, you know, talking about his hot mother and being a ginger alone, that's that's just the tip of the iceberg for Tom. So I hit the horn for you there because you mentioned hot mother, and that's what we do on this show. Uh, by the way, you know what we should have done to kick it off? Mike, welcome to the ADHD Podcast 2. Uh, we actually lost a childhood hero of mine and many recently this week. Um, you know, Paul Rubens, a.k.a. Pee Wee Herman. Um, who also mm-hmm. voices voiced DJ Rex in Oga's Cantina and from Star Tours, uh, the OG Star Tours. Um, it, man. He's also the Penguin's uh, father in uh, Gotham and in Batman Returns. Absolutely. He's part of our childhood somewhere. Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Pee-wee's Playhouse. Um, Big Top Pee-wee was the other one, right? Nothing beats Pee-wee's Big Adventure, but... And then there was there was one not too long ago on Netflix. It wasn't as good as the originals, but it was still fun. But uh, he will be missed, sorely missed. Fuck cancer, indeed. So, and a big wrestling guy too, Mike. Right? Yeah, he was. He was on uh, Monday Night Raw, I believe, in a segment with uh, the Miz and Big Show. Yes, and I the most infamously remember him. Um, Chris was at my house. I, I think you were over too. A bunch of people were over watching WrestleMania, uh, or maybe you weren't. I don't know, but. It was the WrestleMania The Rock was hosting, and Pee Wee showed up because he was John Cena's number one fan, and The Rock was giving it to him. So, right. um, so anyway, yeah. So Mike, just freaking wrestling podcast. Um, what else are you up to these days? Are you out there slinging the Amazing Turtle, which is you know blown up in the indie scene of Chicago wrestling? So, why don't you why don't you share it with the the fourth mother boxers? So, yeah, um, uh, on a podcast called uh, Just Freaking Wrestling, uh, we uh, post every Monday uh, night after we record, like, boom, like that, just like that, it's up. Um, I actually started it. Uh-oh. Did he... I think Mike fell. <laughs> Is this happening? Yes. This is really happening right now. <laughs> That's all right. We okay. get it to you now, but it was so funny how you froze. <laughs> Huh. He pulled the Kyle. So, <laughs> all right, so I'm Go. gonna do what I did last on this from this past Monday. So you guys talk amongst yourself for a second. All right, I'll be just right back. So that that that's that's hilarious, Kyle. Oh, by the way, Kyle. Speaking of um, short jokes and minions, um, I'm getting a preview for the Universal, uh, the new ride at Universal Orlando. It's like this. Have you heard about it? The Minions Blast. Yeah, I heard that it was coming. It was it was opening soon. Yeah, but getting a AP preview for it tomorrow. Um, so let nice. you know how it goes. Nice. It's not it's anything always... incredible. Like it's not like an e ticket, but it's something to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's you got to go see it. So mm-hmm. that's that's what you got to do. Still, so that'll be cool. Still open before Moana at Epcot. Fucking Disney, Christ! All right, Mike. Back to you. So, um, what was the last thing you heard? Um, you froze after just saying uh, you guys release your episodes every Monday. Okay. So, I uh, started there uh, on the podcast on July last year with uh, Travis T. Now, Travis T is actually the cousin of one of your favorite indie wrestlers. Uh, would that be probably my top indie wrestler growing up in Acid? Yep. All right. Look at that. Shout out to Mr. Mike Nolan there. Good old acid. Thanks for the memories. My hair's yeah. not green anymore, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. He can't grow out his hair anymore anyway, <laughs> and it'd probably be gray at this point. I mean, you see his beard; it's yeah. really gray. Yeah, he's rocking it, man. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um. So been doing that, and then, yeah, it kind of blew up with this turtle thing recently. Um, just didn't think it would be a thing, but somehow it just happened. All I right. thought I was done, honestly, but. Thanks to Rocket Pro Wrestling, really. Just fucking yeah. Hell yeah. So you, skyrocket, if you, <laughs> if you will. But um, Crash, you're you're currently Chicagoland Wrestling Champion. Is, is, that, is that right? Did I say that right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that means every establishment that he walks in with that title, he gets a free hot dog. So that's that's the rule, I've been told. That, <laughs> I, I've been, it's in my contract. So... You're like almost Hogan level, like baby face. I feel like it seems like at times. When the hell are you gonna turn heel? 
I feel like I have done that before. And funny thing is, it was, it was just before Rocket Pro, I was a heel manager. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing that for a short time, and it actually kind of helped um, get my name out there just a little bit. Because people actually, even though I was being an asshole, they're actually liking it. <laughs> well, people like to be disappointed, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. It helped with my promos a little bit, um, along with the podcast too. That's been helping. Absolutely. But um, it's just, yeah. I, I now if I do this heel thing, like typical Hogan NWO, mm-hmm. it would probably be just as well. I wouldn't say just as good, but it'll be right there. So Hogan's thing, I say I'd be right about there, but that's mm-hmm. pretty high. You, you got to promise me one thing: when you turn heel. Your next event, you got to come out in a shredder singlet, please. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. You got Well, do I do that. have a singlet that says "Evil Turtle." Oh, Evil Turtle. Yeah, but the I'm shredder, gonna, the I shredder thing's it right there. Twice. Okay. Wrestled in it twice. Okay. Okay, solid. Um, yeah, wrestling. We could sit here and talk about that forever. And I was talking about Kyle and I and Mike. I mean, Mike's in the business now. Kyle and I grew up with it, so it all means something to us one way or another. Kyle, who would you you say growing up, who who was your favorite wrestler, like, as a kid and then in your young adulthood? I feel like, you know, my earliest memory was Hulk Hogan. Like, I just, you know, I remember watching, you know, the old school wrestling, and Hulk Hogan always stuck out. It was my favorite, like, theme song when he came out to, and... um, I watched all the way up until like the Attitude Era, and then The Rock. That's when The Rock and Stone Cold came, and obviously I love The Rock. I think you know it's it's kind of hard to pick a favorite because there was so many good people during that time. But I really like The Rock, Stone Cold, The Undertaker. Taker. You yeah. know, I loved um, Undertaker's story was really good. At, like The Last Ride, I, I watched that not too long ago. So. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, just like the wrestling in this golden era. I mean, these are like iconic wrestlers. Not that there aren't some now, but they, I just don't think, you know, they can really get up to that level of some of these old school figures. And and hell, you know, you got to give it to The Undertaker. Like he was in his, I don't know, 50s, like wrestling and jumping off the top rope. And, you know, like you, you just think about like I crash. I like, uh, you know, flipped over on my bike you know, back in June, <laughs> and I'm still feeling that shit. Can you imagine, can you imagine, fuck off, Mike. Um, <laughs> you you better have brought that Frosty, because you you got to shotgun it, okay? so That'll be on a future it. episode. It will be on a future episode. Right. I, wasn't, I wasn't prepared today. I actually had pizza, so that <gasps> no. would be good for my family. So. <laughs> you got to give the people what they want. So that's, Although, that's I'll really give the them what they want. Show. It's got to be a little patient. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, you know, you got to give respect to people who are doing stuff like that at that level, you know, at that age and doing it again and again. Like that's that's a lot to put your body through. And, you know, whether it's, you know, like some people make the, uh, you know, comment, it's like, oh, it's all fake. Well, that's, you know, <laughs> there's nothing fake. There's nothing fake about that, you know, so. Yeah. Nope, nothing fake about all the shit I did with all the bumps on my shin still either. Um, but we we were idiots. Um, but I'd do it again, yeah. damn it. Every now and again, I get the bug. Every now and again, I get the bug. But And then it goes away, it comes back, it goes away, it comes back. But uh, Ooh, What's I mean, your last... Just, think about it like this. Vic Capri, you know, another independent wrestler mm-hmm. we know. Absolutely. He's He just turned 50, and he's still doing the same shit. Wow, wow. That's something. Ice pick is legit. Yeah, that man's yeah. At, awesome. I mean, I'm so happy to hear that he's still kicking ass and taking names. So good for yeah. Vic. Fuck yeah. Tom, yeah. Was your last match with Chris X? My was no. That your last match. My my last match tex- technically was with a indie wrestling like f- I was a fan of his in Strict Nine, um, who's now a buddy of mine <laughs> who I. Talk to friends with face on Facebook. That was technically my last match. It was inside a cage. Where was it at, Mike? It was at a bar off of 
car. Devrin's Tavern. Devrin's Tavern. There you go. It was at a, an event held by our buddy Jonathan Smash. Um, did you work that show too? I was just your manager. That okay. Night. All right. That's right. Then there you go. That was my last match technically. That was in 2012. So it's been like 11 yeah, wow. years since I've actually yeah. done that. Yeah. Wow. Been 11 years. Like not, I'll, I really have like a day and a half of <laughs> of training. So the rest of it yeah. is just yard, yard tard crap. So, because I'm not going to act like I'm a pro wrestler or anything. Uh, absolutely not. So MTV busted once. And that's all. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, D- SummerSlam is freaking tomorrow. And I'm actually really excited about this card, man. Um, I want to run down it real quick. Um, did you have any thoughts on the actual card itself, Mike, before we kind of roll through it? Uh, well, here. It, it's shaping up to be a great card. Mm-hmm. Um, it's SummerSlam, too. It's like the next best uh, pay per view of the year. You know, second to WrestleMania, or well, actually, I say the Rumble. I say third, I I like Royal Rumble. Yeah, more. Oh, do you hear the rumor about the Rumble being here in Orlando in twenty four? I heard that rumor. If that's the case, I think I'm going. I'll take Lily <laughs> at like four <laughs> or five months. Um, if LA Knight doesn't win, from what I've been like paying attention to recently, people will riot. Um. Mm-hmm. But here's a card for SummerSlam. Um, main event, which has been a tremendous buildup. Even for me, I'm not watching every week, but from afar, I could feel the tension of Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso in, in a tribal combat. Like, this is just awesome how they've been building up to this. Um, Rollins versus Finn Balor. It actually seems like those two are actually feuding. Like, as WWE learned its lesson, and they're, like, continuing feuds for a long time now um, over the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Women's champion, uh, women's championship match: Oscar, Bianca Belair, and Charlotte Flair. Um, let me ask you a question. I haven't really been paying attention to the women. I know people are sick of Charlotte. Are people sick of Bianca yet? She had her moment of having people boo her, I think. Hmm. Okay. But I'm. It's starting to be a trend now where they get sick of everybody. It doesn't matter whether it's a female or male now. Mm-hmm. But it's mostly with the women. Like, they like them for a, two, a year or two. I mean, I still like Bianca. She was my pick um, after that, not the Rumble before she won. Or, no, the, the Rumble she won, I picked her. But I picked her for the Rumble before because I thought she was okay. phenomenal. Okay, okay, okay. Um, fucking, this is probably my favorite, like, current wrestler right now. But the IC current. Current Intercontinental Champion Gunther, I fucking love everything I see this guy do. God, you know I love Drew McIntyre, but I'm hoping Gunther breaks the Hunky Tonk Man streak. Me too, absolutely. Let, let's go Gunther. Like I'm all behind this guy. I love this guy. Yeah. Um, Ricochet versus Logan Paul seems to be actually might be freaking cool. I mean, they both are athletic as hell, and I'd love to see Ricochet beat this guy's ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember when you first saw Ricochet live? I absolutely do. I absolutely do remember that. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm always a you know rooting for Ricochet, whatever the hell he does. So we, I mean, we were both there. Yeah. I don't we remember the show exactly. The Give he me did that flippity flop at Elite Pro. Ah, well, it, it was Elite Pro. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's that's badass. Ooh, and to see him now in, like, one of the big matches for SummerSlam. That's fucking badass. Yeah. Let's go Ricochet. King Ricochet. Um, this is, albeit Ronda Rousey's probably last match in WWE, right? Rousey versus Shayna. Yeah. Shayna Baszler. Yes. But... Really? Yes. Yeah. What happened with that? Mike, do you know? I don't know specifics, but she's probably... She's got that kid. She probably wants to be a mom. Um, she had a good run she made money uh she's a good heel they had a bad rep but she's a good really? heel for a while well because a lot of people didn't like the idea of a ufc fighter coming in and steal someone's spot i get it but it also made him money i mean brock lesnar kind of went back and forth right? yeah but he started as a pro wrestler so him 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 coming back was like totally all right yeah this was somebody who went from UFC right into 
pro wrestling. Yeah, Brock was, was at FCW, and then he he weighed his weight at WWE. I was going to say, like, earlier that it's interesting that there's more women wrestlers now, and there's more focus on it. Not that I've been watching, but, you know, it just seems like there's there's more of a focus. And when we grew up, they're really, like, you know, other than China, like, I, I don't remember any real women wrestling as much. Uh, Lita so Trish Stratus. Cool. Oh, yeah, Trish Stratus. Yeah, I remember Lita. her. And Lita. But it just didn't Tori. seem like it was as big as of a thing as it is now. No, it, it wasn't, but they started something. Because you hear that, like, a lot of girls now remember them. Mm-hmm. They only talk about them, plus China. So... Well, that's that's cool. That's kind of like offering something different. Yeah. No, I think I think women's wrestling is so like it's they it's come along a long way, especially when you watch it. Like it, it's there is genuine genuine interest in it, and there's I think the jokes about I'll take a piss break during the women's matches are stupid. They're really fucking stupid. No. I'm sick and tired of hear, seeing those. I if anything, I take a piss break during a lot of the guys' matches because a lot of women now are phenomenal i'm watching a bunch of them like grow in the indies right now one Uh, that i actually wrestled is in AEW right now oh nice who uh sky blue sky blue oh that's right yeah i think i've seen you post about her before very cool yeah i mean we i didn't actually have a match match with her but we were in a couple battle royals she eliminated me once all right there you go claim to fame you got to put it on your resume (laughs) Yeah. Um, uh, there's a summer. Speaking of battle royals, there's a summer slam battle royal tomorrow. So you know I'm all about that life. Um, and then finally another big match: Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. So, and that's been a feud that's been ongoing. Yeah. Ever since Cody lost at WrestleMania, I did not see that one coming. Did I you? didn't see it coming, but I was hoping for it because mm-hmm. it makes sense. They want to build Cody. They want to keep him around. Mm-hmm. You know what? One of my spe- speaking of Lesnar going all the way back, one of my favorite SummerSlam moments. Kyle was actually over at my place when we watched was SummerSlam 2002, when The Rock dropped the undisputed belt to Brock, uh, when Brock became the um, like youngest WWE champ. He beat The Rock's record, and then that same night was Shawn Michaels' comeback match against Triple H, um, and he beat him. Remember, like it. Um, God, that was one of the best matches ever. And then, you know, yeah. Triple H ended up hitting him with a sledgehammer. And there were some other great matches on there, too. I think I remember He Who Shall Be Not Be Named, Chris Benoit, had a good match, too. There was a bunch of great stuff. I don't know if you remember that event, Kyle, but you were definitely over. Was it, was it like when you lived in Warrenville? No, 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 no. This was like, we were younger, like s- 2002, so we were 16. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that. All right. I know you were there, though, yeah. The Rock versus Brock. You might have been, you were still in Elsip then. I was, yeah. I was Joe Alice's house. Yeah, that was like the, that basement. That's what we were watching that. I remember SummerSlam being during Summerfest in Elsip a, a bunch, too, if uh-huh. I recall. Do you remember that old Summerfest, Kyle? I Did you go to, yeah, I don't, you had to have gone to that. Fight? Yeah. That that's the where I uh, blew all that money in basketball. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know why I thought that was St. Catharines, but that was a lot of money. Did you end up getting the oh, stuffed it's, animal? It's legendary. Yeah. Did you end up getting anything for that? No. <laughs> that carney's out there somewhere in a ditch with that sixty dollars. He's like, I got him. <laughs> Um, well, anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to SummerSlam. Um, any any last thoughts on that before we kind of move it along, Mike, and start talking about nerdy shit, nerdy comic book shit? Oh, so we're going to talk about Kyle the rest of the show? Cool. Oh. Whoa. Shots fired. Shots fired indeed. Uh, the turtle no, is not on his I, back. I think we're good on the SummerSlam stuff. And... Have you given anybody the stink face yet? No. <laughs> Why not? But I, you but just I just have farted. It. I have farted during a match. <laughs> Please tell that story. Oh, shit. So... Our listeners love farts. Okay, so... There was once... 
I was repping in the one match. And <laughs> Why is it I funny or because you're repping? You went to slide. I went to slide for the count. And I and now mind you, it was completely silent in the building at the moment. I <laughs> So after I made the three count or no, it was a two count and I looked at a Ladies and gentlemen, we lost Tom. Oh, and Mike, too, apparently. <laughs> no. uh, you oh. ain't losing me yet. Oh. I ain't fart my way out of this. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying. All right, just start the fart story over. <laughs> Wait, did, you missed miss the whole thing? <laughs> we got you froze. It was so funny. God damn. Why does it do this today? It did this on Monday, too. So, okay. So I slid, went for the two count, and I and I heard that shit like it, it sounded <laughs> like an echo. And when I look, I looked at a fan. I'm like, "Did you do that? Did you hear that?" <laughs> and then I just got up and continued the match. But <laughs> when I was at a practice once, I did part on Mike Nolan. <laughs> Good. And then he chopped me for that. Oh well, <laughs> uh, deserve a chop. <laughs> Next time you got to lead with the fart stories, Mike. Got to lead with that here on Fourth Mother Box. That's all we do. Farts and <laughs> diarrhea. So, um, earlier this week, I texted Kyle. And I showed him a stat that said there were like Zack Snyder's little tweet about Blue Beetle. Like 14 million people looked at that or something like that. It's some, something enormous. And it blew, or 44 million, I don't know. But it blew the James Gunn Superman announcement out of the water as far as views go. And the actual Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle trailer itself. So wh- where do we, like, like, what does that say? Like, I mean, does that say, like, a Snyder people were right all the time? No, I'm not talking about the toxic cultists out there, but it's like the guy just puts an innocent tweet about Blue Beetle out and like a lot of people are looking at it. So what did he say? Cause I actually didn't read it. He said, um, excite, uh, excited to take my kids to see Blue Beetle. And he hashtagged Blue Beetle and had hashtag representation matters. That what's, what's such a big thing about that? I, I guess I don't get why that was such a big tweet. Well, but, it's it's not so much like the big tweet, but it's just like how many people like flocked to seeing that message from him, him simply promoting Blue Beetle. Like Zack Snyder's name carries so much gravitas and so much weight. People are just like looking at that. And then when you look at the, an actual real DC announcement from somebody who's part of the project saying so-and-so is Superman and Lois, like more people cared about Zack Snyder's Blue Beetle tweet than they did. James Gunn's announcement about Superman, according to those numbers. I, it's just... Now, we're, Kyle and I are still very much excited about the future of the DCU, right? Um, they they announced that animated films, these canonical animated films, are they're going to get theatrical releases. And both Kyle and I think that's badass, right, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to ask, like, do you... I mean, with the... You know, the whole movie industry kind of being in the toilet, aside from, you know, Barbie and Oppenheimer, you know, do you think this is going to do good? Because it just seems like it's superhero movies in general and TV shows have just been, you know, kind of like not performing as well. So do you think this is going to perform well at the box office? Um, If there's some sort of bounce back in the box office where... Or if just the movies like course correct himself, like what are people sick of, right? They're sick of deviating from source material. They're sick of, I don't know, but but you're right. Comic book movies are burnt out, and I don't think I have an answer for that. Like what do I think is going to happen? I don't know. I'm going to support it. I'm going to go see it. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of buzz about it, mm-hmm. and people were excited to see it, especially with the seeing the trailer. But, you know, there's a lot of buzz, a lot, so much hype about The Flash, and I I don't even know, I don't even know what to expect. I know that I will, I'm going to go see it, 
when it comes out, but I just I feel like I I don't know how it will do. I I have a feeling it's just like you know I hope it does well. That's that's my thing. Like, mm-hmm. I really do. Me too, me too. But you're right. We're kind of in this limbo state of limbo, and w- one of the guaranteed good things going for comic book movies right now, Batman and Joker, those are going to be delayed. <laughs> Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to ask one other thing about the Blue Beetle. Like, is there any indication of, like, what universe this is? Because we know Batman is apparently in this universe, but which Batman, like, do we know? From my understanding, it's Snyder's universe. It's like the DCEU one. I mean, and you know, the same one that Aquaman exists in, the same one that The Flash exists in. I think the Flash's movie is going to have something to do at the end, and Blue Beetle will end up in the New World or some something like that. I don't know. Pull a Spider-Man No Way Home, or well, that was at the end of Morbius. I don't know. <laughs> They'll just copy, copy the homework. So, I wanted to ask you, like, you know, that comes out the same weekend as um, Metallica plays in theater. So, I'm, I'm not going to either because how close that is to Lily's due date. So you won't be going to either. Nope. That's that's it's 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 just a little closer to the to to the due date. So I'm good. You'll have to report Priorities. back. Yeah. Priorities, Kyle. Yeah. Um, because Courtney will be like uncomfortable and stuff, and I just first time that I'm doing yeah. this, I don't want to be in a movie theater. I don't want to be. Yeah, yeah. I just rather be home. I'd just rather be home. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. But you, uh, I will go and I will. Thank you. I yes. will give it the the fourth mother box full review. I appreciate that. that. So yeah, I have to do that. Um, but speaking of Metallica, I'm like three months away from seeing them, so we'll have we'll have to report on that in the Snake Pit in St. Louis, and then Chicago. We're gonna have to coordinate that for next year. Bring Lily. I was to gonna Chicago. see them uh, next month, but no, uh, that's my know, fault. Somebody had to go and have a. A baby mm-hmm. that uh, an yep. unplanned one. Yep. Not right naming here. any names, of course. So. Yep. Right down here. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. My fault. Well, yeah. Kyle and I were totally gonna see them in Phoenix in like a month. So, e one on me. Ugh, not good. Um. Uh, no, it's good. Of course, it's good. Um. I'll miss Metallica for the birth of my daughter. Of course, I will. That was easy. So uh, Kyle just made it easier because he didn't have anybody to go with him. So <laughs> did you make bank on your on your resale, by the way? I haven't sold it yet. It's it's just sitting there like waiting. Oh, shoot. So, oh, boy. Yeah. It'll so, sell. Um, I, you know, I would say like I might entertain the thought of just going. Ooh. But, uh, you know, now I planned a trip to the wonderful world of Disneyland. That's in true. California. So. I will be there. All righty. Um, so yeah, that that is that's like I'm not trying to prove anything. I think on the Snyder thing, but it's just like we keep seeing stuff that there are people interested in that, and I think there was a way you could have continued it and made everybody happy. I, I it's it's kind of sick of talking about it. I mean, DC is doing some good things. It sounds like. Um, so Gal Gadot apparently is coming back for Wonder Woman 3 that's being developed in the new universe. Is this right, Kyle? Like, I don't know. She just a- said that like she and James Gunn were working on Wonder Woman 3. And that's that's really good news because, you know, we all love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She's she plays a good she's really good in that role. I know WW84 was kind of a bit lackluster but I think, you know, maybe she could either end strong or, you know, kind of like start again. Like I would be fine with either. But I just, you know, I'm just glad to see that she's continuing because I really like her in that role. Yes. Yeah, she's a fantastic Wonder Woman. Princess Diana, I think she did she did well in The Flash. I've seen some people say it was cringe. I don't think it was. Um, I do have a critique of the, something in The Flash. The more and more I see that bat suit that he's in, I don't like it. Oh, in the flash? Yeah. Yeah, it looked fucking weird. I I'm mean not a fan of that. There was there were certain parts like when he was driving, like, mm. you know, like in the bat pod, it looked fine. But then when they when he got off and they were like standing on that bridge, it almost looked like 
you know, it was underdeveloped or something, mm-hmm. or like there was like CGI gone wrong. And I don't know what it is with DC or Warner Brothers. Like they can't get their shit together. I mean, Marvel has thrown some shit on the screen, but at least they their stuff is consistent. You know, like they don't it's consistently boring like, right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it just like pisses me off, especially with the whole Henry Cavill mustache fiasco. Yeah. I mean, that was. I don't know if I've ever seen anything as an unprofessional in a big budget movie as that, you know? So that was just insane. I remember sitting in the theater. We saw it together in Arizona and it was just like, what? Yeah. You know, (laughs) I mean, not that it's a big deal, but it just was like, it looks so bad. It was like cell phone, a cell phone filter. It it was. And I'm so glad that Zach redid this and, you know, made the masterpiece that is the, Zack Snyder's Justice League mm-hmm. because that was just you know it needed to happen so I'm glad that it ended you know well that's right Mike what was the last comic book movie you saw oh shit I can't remember did you see the Batman um, with Robert Pattinson yeah I saw that that might have been it okay then. what did you think yeah, of that what did you think of that I thought it was phenomenal. Um, Do you like it? Actually. Yeah, go ahead. What, what's that? I was going to ask you if you no, liked it better than The Dark Knight. Okay. Um, shit. Not even I, can't compa- I, I don't think I can compare them because they're two different things. Like, it's hard to compare those two, especially when Dark Knight was actually... You know, okay, so it's the second one of the trilogy when the the Robert Pattinson one is actually the beginning. Mm-hmm. If anything, you should compare that to Batman Begins. Right. Ooh. I like Batman yeah. Begins, man. Those two could go side by side. I, mean, right. I think the Batman was certainly more adult and more like cerebral than Batman Begins. I think Batman Begins is is more for the casual viewer. Like anybody could go watch that. Mm-hmm. Not everybody could go see the Batman because it was a, it was like a, a a superhero film with like a real plot. So, you know, if you travel over to the Marvel universe, like you're never gonna see a, like a plot <laughs> like that. And you know, other than maybe like I don't know, I think Logan. I mean, we're talking about the MCU, not maybe some of the. Uh, outlier ones but their plots snapped away with thanos as soon as thanos died so did so did the mcu's plots well outside yeah. of no way home no way home was great that's sh- that really should have you know like that was their magnum opus you know the infinity war the no way home like they just they really did well and i don't i don't know if we're gonna get back to that so <laughs> they're just like you know i don't know that's why you come to us for the entertainment all the strikes stay on strike forever because fourth mother box is going to continue to give you farts and diarrhea every week so i mean better than better than anything marvel so oh could you like (laughs) could you tom could you accept like if they just decided you know what we're going to reboot the marvel universe would you rather have that or would you rather have it keep going huh because you could in a theory, no. reset the universe of MCU. I mean, then you get people, you know, characters that people really like a lot. You don't, you know, make make an excuse to get the Avengers, and I put that in quotes to the side, or make them ancillary characters, and you soft reboot the MCU. Keep those legacy characters. Tony Stark's still dead, but X Men. You. Yeah. Beat the shit out of the X Men, and you just branch off from there. We want to see like the Hulk fight, like Wolverine. Ugh. You know what I mean? You yeah. want to see the X Men interact with Spider Man? Absolutely. You know, some of these are just legendary interactions in the comics and in anim- animated TV shows. So we want to see that. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of the character, you know, OG Avengers are like either dead or on their way out. You know, Thor is even Chris Hemsworth. We don't know if he's going to return. I mean, I think he he, he might do the Thor five, but you love know, him blunder. 
That's what Thor 5 is called. Love and Blunderer. Blunderer. More. Stupid movie. I don't know. <laughs> Thor, uh, more jokes. Yeah. Thor 5 with just like, you know. Extra like, sauce. Like, um, you, speaking of like good animation with DC right now, I talked. we know we talked about the animated films earlier, but what they're doing well Harley Quinn, and we've got season our episode four already. All four episodes of season four. Um, you liking this season thus far, Kyle? Because I am. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I think it was texting you. I was watching the fourth episode today, and I, I was texting you earlier that man, G, uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Not only is he a phenomenal actor, this guy just kills it in every role. And I don't know how he does it, but he really, really does. And he's so good at Lex Luthor and or voicing Lex Luthor. I mean, he could, you know, on the big screen, he could play a really good Lex Luthor. Absolutely. I don't know if he would do it because, like, he's kind of talked about, like, you know, kind of um, getting tired of getting typecast as the villain. I mean, he's so good at the villain. So um, Lex is such a know, great though. villain to play, though. Ugh. I don't want Nicholas Holt, like, I don't, or whatever his name is, because he just seems like he's somebody that's in everything. <laughs> I would rather see somebody kind of, like, new. Yeah. Like, somebody, like, more fresh, or, or maybe, I don't know, like, but Lex Luthor's an important character that you want to, you know, you don't want to take that casting lightly. I 1,000% agree. Um, I'd selfishly love to see him rep- uh, play Lex Luthor. Um, Mike, did you ever end up watching Batman vs. Superman? With yeah, I did. Affleck. Okay, what did you think of um, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor? I thought it was uh, pretty good. Didn't have complaints about it. Yeah, but I mean, you don't know too too much about like the old Lex Luthor, right? Like outside of just knowing he's the bald guy from Superman. Like as far as like real comic knowledge, I would say. Right, I'm not in like into the whole comic book part of it. Yeah, I just go going off like past supermans that i've seen okay obviously the christopher reeves one. Oh yeah and then batman versus superman i mean he wasn't bad he was a good villain okay but it's hard to compare anything though yeah like, i don't know too much yeah i see and that's and that's and i and i figured you had that take because that's like that kind of the point i keep making why he was a good lex Luthor. that's like the everyman take but giancarlo esposito would be like a definitive lex Luthor. i think he would be better than better than jesse eisenberg so he like even in the boys, you know the TV mm-hmm. show. I don't know if you watched the boys at all, Tom. Did you ever watch? Oh that? no, not yet. No. Okay, so the boys is kind of like it's like superheroes that's rated R with like politics, and it's it's got kind of like a Deadpool style of humor. Like there's there's an episode where it starts where there's like a huge superhero orgy and like they show absolutely everything. So. Oh, God. Um, it, it's a it's a good it's actually a well written show. I I'm surprised at like the how how well it's done, but uh, he plays kind of like a Lex Luthor character. He's like you know like the head of this corporation, and you know obviously he has like these he's really intelligent. You know what I mean? So, um, you, you kind of have to see it, but I think his. I I doubt that they would go with him as as Lex Luthor, yeah. just because he's had so many. I guess like you know prior uh, characters that are that emulate Lex Luthor as it is. So that's true. It would it might not be as like exciting anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, another character from Snyder's universe, Ben Affleck's Batman. There's more news out this week about his movie that never saw the light of day. There was apparently like eighty year eighty years of lore, sm- of Batman lore smashed into this movie. Um, this was coming from someone who was working on it with Affleck. It's just, it's just, I don't want to hear any more about it because I just get more upset every time they release news about this failed Batman movie. Yeah, when's this writer's strike going to end? Because, <laughs> like, this is upsetting, you know, that we had COVID to delay all these movies, and now we're having a writer's strike that seems like there's just no end in sight. Well, this is I a mean, product uh, of what happened to, with COVID. This is a product of the economy tanking because of COVID inflation. So now it causes the writer's strike because they're not paying them enough. So, 
it you know what even even working with clients like i hear this so so much companies are just lowballing their employees they're cutting costs left and right announcing they're, layoffs they're firing people like you know it's just it just seems like it's a sad state of affairs like I, and i don't i just hope that at some point it, it comes to like some sort of balance you know balance in the force that's right is it affecting like all of hollywood or is it or is there certain sections of it i wonder I don't know. I don't really know. It seems like it's all of Hollywood, but then maybe there are smaller companies that it just doesn't impact. I'm sure there's like, you know, the big name companies like Disney and, you know, some on Sony and stuff like that. But I would wonder, you know, Oh, Disney had layoffs, but they did most of that in marketing. And I, um, but, uh, I think like directors and producers, like they're not impacted by any of this right now, or they're not on strike. So, that's why you see James Gunn still talking about stuff and like producer, like the producer of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like the the new movie Seth Rogen did that came out last weekend or this weekend. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, this weekend. Yeah. This weekend. Okay. Um, Got a really good review apparently. Good. Too. Good. Are you going to see it, Mike? Uh, no, because I'm not really into the cartoony animation stuff. Okay, that's fair. That's I fair. mean, if it's on like TV someday, I mean, yeah, it will be on. But I'll watch it if I got nothing else to do. But all right, that's fair. Kind of the same way with Fast and Furious. I still haven't seen that yet. Uh, any more? Have did we miss anything? We're all out of brand fresh news, Kyle. Did we? Did we miss anything big with DC? Loki. I wanted to mention Loki. We got that trailer, the Loki two trailer. Um, what did you think of it? I, I think it passed the eye test. It, it looked like it was more action packed this year. Yeah. Uh, when does it come out? October 6th, I believe. Okay. And we actually, Ahsoka is coming out soon, Ooh. right? Is it, that's this month? August 23rd. That's less than three weeks away. Oh, thank God. I mean, if, two episodes you know, dropping on August 23rd. That's great. Runtime. Mike or- for both like, are an hour 36 watching star wars or like checking it out at all yeah i i actually uh saw the mandalorian uh and andor which you're wrong by the way it's still a good <laughs> series oh. um i will check uh uh ahsoka so and uh what's that what's another one coming out next year i think no uh skeleton crew next- should be coming out at the end of this year but i don't know if the any of the okay. strikes delayed that we haven't heard about that, um, but man, I'm so pumped for Ahsoka. I started watching, uh, going to run through through Rebels again, which is basically going to prepare you for it. Um, this is going to be a great series, great freaking series. I'm excited. I think it, I think Mike, it could topple the Mandalorian. Mike, what is your favorite piece of Star Wars so far that you've seen? Um, definitely Mandalorian. That's a good show. It's just, you know, like in in a sea of like all these content that's out there, you know, I think it's really hard to have a like good, well-written show. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I know Brad actually talks a lot about how the season three wasn't that great, but I don't think that I think it was, you know, not maybe not on par with some of the the other ones, but it was it was a good I think the Mandalorian has been consistent. Yes, the Mandalorian has been consistent. They did well with it. They did. Yeah. Season three was, I thought it was, was good. You know, I just, you, once you like blow your load on like <laughs> Luke Skywalker, it's like, it, you're never going to capture that again, or it's going to be extremely difficult. So, mm-hmm. but that's why I think season four will deliver because they did, because they're, it's, it's, it's like electing a president that is just a little bit less sucky. Right. And it's just like, you know what you're going to get and you have to expect to just sit through that bullshit until things get better. So it's like you have such a drop off from season two, how great that ending was. And then even the bit we got in Book of Boba Fett. Now, don't forget that. So we're like, man, Mando season three is going to be great. And it's like Mandalorian lore, which is cool for us nerds. But I think casuals didn't like this season just because they're waiting for the big moment. They're waiting to see Luke and Grogu doing flippity flips again. So, And that's the problem. Like People just don't want to enjoy shit. 
that's out there. Just stop expecting, you know, so much of this and just enjoy what's in front of you. Yep. Yeah. You're, you're lucky to be getting something. Thousand percent right. That's that's great. The people are hating. They're just hating to hate. You know? Oh, Kyle, we didn't even talk about Haunted Mansion. Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah, we, we totally you, forgot to talk about that. Do you care if we talk you know, spoiler alert uh, about Haunted Mansion, Mike? I don't know if you were going to go see that movie. Probably not. Okay. I, I don't really go to see movies. Okay. So. All right. So, Kyle, I'll I'll let you talk. So, spoiler alert for Haunted Mansion. If you're stuck with us for 55 minutes, we both saw the movie. So, what'd you think? I thought it was kind of a safe, a safe movie. It didn't really take many risks. I. I like that it was respectful to the ride. I mean, I love that ride. It's it's one of my favorite Disney rides of all time. You know, there were so many elements from that ride that I saw in the film, you know, like the floating candle in the hallway and, mm-hmm. you know, the chair. And I think, you know, that there was like the, the cat painting that's in there. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, there were so many just little things that they put in there. That was cool. The story was was you know wasn't anything that was just like above and beyond. And Jared Leto didn't totally suck, you know, or yeah, ruin he didn't the ruin film it. Yeah. for once. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it was it was it was a good watch. Like I I liked it. You know, I liked the fact that Disney did something different instead of just rehash another live animated remake. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is interesting that it it's not doing well. It's like we're all like the population is just dumb. Like they don't, they don't want something new. They just want like, I want to see another remake of the lion King and I'm going to go see that. And it's like, you already know this whole movie. So it almost doesn't make sense to watch it. You know, I can maybe understand the success of the little mermaid. I mean, some of those films, you just, they're so iconic. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, and the music is just so great. Um, But even then, like I, I'm just like I don't want to rewatch something that I've seen a dozen times and pay for it. I know? get it. I get it. Yeah. Um. I I I don't know. I don't think it's doing all that well because all the actors in it and there's a bunch of big names. They can't market it because they're on strike. So if you're not frequenting the parks like us, or you're a diehard Disney fan like Kyle is. You might not know the Haunted Mansion is, like, out this weekend. I mean, I know they're trying to plast it everywhere, and you see it on social media, but that's only if people are following Disney or following the Haunted Mansion page. You know, Rosario Dawson can't post about it. Owen Wilson can't post about it. Like, he can't promote it. Danny DeVito can't do it. Those are big freaking following. Those are big names. So this could contribute to it, but I also think it's what Mike said earlier is that there's haters, too. Like people yeah. want want Disney to fail right now. They want everything Disney to do to fail, because somebody's telling them on the big old box that Disney's evil, and they're buying into every bit instead of thinking uh, for themselves. So that's all. I'm so tired. I'm so tired of like the outrage culture in our society. Like you know, every you can't just like have a, just a regular movie without something being controversial about it. Yep. You know, everybody has to find a reason to be outraged. And it's like, just like relax, enjoy your life and go see a fucking movie without shitting your pants about it. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Unless the movie is about shitting said pants. So then go ahead and shit your britches. But yeah, you, you guys, absolutely. you guys have been great. We've been fourth mother box. I feel the same absolute way about Kyle with Haunted Mansion. By the way, um, follow us again at Fourth Mother Box on Instagram, YouTube dot com slash Fourth Mother Box. Mike, where can they follow you on the social medias? Um, I'm everywhere. Um, you can mainly get me on Facebook, Michael A Narot, N A W R O T, or follow Just Freaking Wrestling. There you go on uh, Facebook and. And it's freaking, not freaking. Freaking. No G at the end. We'll go ahead and tag them on here so everybody wants to get their wrestling on. So thanks for joining, Mike. Obviously, we're going to let Kyle fumble through the final words today. But before we give it over to him, splash some brute there on the neck, and I'll let you give the final, final word, or the fi- the pre-final words before Kyle's final words. Oh, well. Uh, fuck you, Kyle. You're an idiot. (laughs) 
Well, my final words are, fuck you, Mike. And fuck you, Brad. <laughs> <laughs>